basically do enough magic burst to kill multiple heroes on Nick Galaxy and he'll... Yeah, I think so. I mean, they, it's a spammy thing. They, they want to just spam their spells as much as possible. Bottom lane, Kuro oh, gets Kuro. by the neutral. Ooh, that's a massive, unlucky, unfortunate moment there for Kuro and Kachal. He's played so many puck games that he knows how to push the advantage on this Timber Saw, which in the current patch, when I talked about Mars being an A-tier offlaner, as he actually does go down at the same time, uh, Timber is like an S-tier. Yeah. Yeah, Timber is, I mean, Timber is absurd this patch. It's one of the, the power every single yeah. attack. He's really just uh, laying into FPC. He's going to have to salve up as well here. Try and keep the HP up. Oh, Bottom lane, attempt here, yeah. skewer back. Yeah. There's a big rocket barrage to tank for one hero, but there's a big stick, and here comes Lowdown as well for the rotation, Radiant and Miracle will drop. They do get a three-man Crystal Nova there by Kuro, but he's still hunted and he's running out of HP. So Jeezy and Lodine, the supports will take the kills. Kachal gets to stay in the lane a bit longer and more. But for now, you know, it's a pretty silent game for them, not getting a single kill. As I say that, Kuro is chasing for Jeezy, yeah. but can't really finish him off. Ruben forced away, has no regen remaining. Kachal also has to skewer away from Miracle. See the two points in Empower, one point in Shockwave. Kuro gets a solo kill off of Jeezy there. Anticipates his movements correctly. And he has level 6 before the Timber does, because Timber had to go all the way back. Mikey got himself the solo XP in the lane. Mikey uh, actually is going to wall straight into the blast from the Matthew. Uh, Coddle. There's a TP coming in from Kuro, though. They do break the link off of the Coddle, and Matthew is low, but Lodine is the one who's dropping right now. The Wisdom Rune was secured by FBZ, and here comes Samail trying to catch the Puck, but Puck's already moved away. So there's the first... What's Matthew, at least? Yeah, they saw the Black Cannon connects on him, so, uh, you know, the reality has been spotted. Farm and camp, and then move away, but at the same time, they're gonna push him to, uh, to the clicks. And there's the arena placed out by FBZ that will spear the Rubik. He's gonna drop, but Miracle dies first. Blood Grenade coming in as well, connected onto the Clinks. And that will help them slow them down a bit as FBZ is trying to reposition away. Kachal has another skewer available now. RP is also up. He has his tools, but they have to be quite careful here as they're in a weird position. They get the D ward though. Lodine gonna back up, has to earn still. Mid lane. But Kachal, are they setting up for a Kachal kill, kill here? Yes, they're gonna try. Miracle coming up with a frostbite from Kuroki. Call down is there as well. So Magnus, if you try to skewer out, well, he actually he skewers a cooldown. <laughs> yeah, he. I think he got stopped. Uh, the frostbite probably him. broke him. Yeah. Yeah, I think they stopped him. Um, he didn't really want to commit the RP either. He didn't have anyone nearby. Maybe if the Clink was already oh, down there. Oh, Lodine but... going for aggressive play, trying to snipe the Timber Saw, who just finished off some farming. And doesn't actually go down, so the Nature's Prophet might just be food instead. Sprout to place on PC, just close himself away. Reality though, in for the hunt, trying to get a retaliating kill here. Arena is available, but no spear until three seconds. They've got the solar, solar bind on reality. There's the arena, spears out. GZ has an Illuminate Blast that will heal up the Clinks, but Sumail trying to finish him off with the Chakra. Clinks ain't moving anywhere. Mikey fighting versus the Crystal Maiden, drops down the coil, trying to get the kill. 50 HP, Frostbite comes through, gets the orb and gets the kill. And Clinks also seems to be able to retreat from that. Leave with the rotations. Yeah, like uh, he's revealing his blink uh, basically to the creep wave. So they'll know about it. So mail. Oh, nice cancel there. They got the lift just before the timber chain went off, and the skewer, the coil snap coming out, and a beautiful setup there from Winter Bear. They were bringing in the Furion, but he doesn't need to teleport in as the kill goes through. A really clean setup. Just looking at what is Winter Bear making with their moves, replying to that, but you need to make a shift in tempo at some point, and when you do, you hope to capitalize on that. Mikey might just be the one to do it because he's chasing FBZ, pops the coil, but Sumail and Kuro are coming in for the rescue. So Mars is just standing his ground, not even worried about this puck around. Matthew in the trees too, so you've got the numbers. Miracle goes down in the bot lane to Kachal on reality. That is... That is the RP not even used for that kill. And they're going to still fight this top lane as well. FBC and Lowdown will both drop. Rubik gets to steal the Crystal Nova from Kuroki. And Mikey still trading off that Witchblade is hurting the Crystal Maiden. Also, the Matthew Caudle has to back away. And now comes Reality. He's got the brown boots. <laughs> Gotta be careful of those. The Skeleton Man is here. Samael's going to go down so fast to this. 
It's been away. It's a nice chakram for double uh, damage. Still not enough. Not enough indeed. The damage output too much to deal with. And Winterbear will officially take an eco economy lead here. Now 5k up versus Nygma. Well, a lot of attention to bottom lane right now. NPC is also aggressively scouting. Nobody farming, the, uh, nobody in the camp, so it's like somebody is probably around the area. Kachal, there's the coil onto Matthew, and there we go. The same combo as we've seen before. Coil into Skewer, snap it up. They got themselves a Rubik for their efforts, though, but that's the arena for support. Maybe Miracle found as well. Lowdown is there with the full vessel, so the Jarcops is gonna need some backup. Mikey is here, and here comes Reality. They're just gonna have to sack their carry. Mikey for a second kill. Kachal finishes off Kuroki as well, and he's kiting some mail on FBC just long enough so Mikey can arrive and get that poke in as well. He's gonna be sent into the air with the Yules. So mail doesn't get any damage out as he's just gonna dodge up with a face ship, and they've got every single one. Winter Bear wiping Nygma Galaxy. And they will take this tower as well for their efforts. Just beautiful plays happening all over the place. They're actually backing out on Nigma. Yeah. They smoke and retreat from the area. But you have to wonder if uh, Winter Bears are looking to steal here. 15 seconds yeah, for the Yeah, they're going for the Tormentor. And, Tormentor. and Nigma's coming in from the side at the same time. So they're going to be softened up already. Nice Reality board. gets the shard for himself. He's going to get stolen up by the Solar Vine, but the BKB turnaround. He's going to force them away by himself. Low down to the back line as well. Getting some damage out. Matthew to drop. Kuro's dead as well. Low down. It's fine that if they lose a uh, Nature's Prophet because everybody else is still healthy. Still have the RP as well. Ooh, Mikey. Nice. nice little poke there as well. And now with no towers remaining as well, picking up that invis rune, FBC would love to exit the base oh. to get some farm, but the Caudal is just going to get deleted right outside of his base. He walked out, put down the sentry, saw that he was dead. It's one of those moments you slap down the sentry yep. and you see that they're already Ricky next to you. <laughs> it's like, yeah. this time it was a clinks, but... And, and they just mass TP as well because they want to get a quick fight. The spear comes out onto the clinks. The buyback coming up from Matthew at the same time. Catch all with the RP. They've got the gyrocopter and that BKB is wearing down. Even if clinks isn't inside the arena, they still get the kills through. Kuro's going to be the next one to drop. And it's a heavy fight price to pay as FBC. He's got nowhere to run. And this is going to be a lane of racks. This is going to be the game winter 26 bear minutes. 26 minutes indeed waga I have that good ways to kill him so. based on the heroes and not looking at the players before he gets to the lane they're also body blocking the enemy creep wave to try and get it on the tower yeah. and, and they're and, still uh, fighting as well in the mid area reality with lodine fighting matthew and fbz and the first blood is imminent for fbz but there's a stick heal matthew might just have to secure it and he will take first blood so two simultaneous fights going on as the laning stage has only just begun <laughs> i feel like if he had bracer here i, I would lose my, <laughs> lose my shit i can't with these bracers this uh. is a much more solid starting build i feel that actually stays alive. Yeah, if he had minus two oh, armor, oh, Koro's actually dead here. Oh, no staying alive for him. Gets brought down by the harassment from the techies and the, the bonk from the special Mars here. Yeah, very deadly harasser lane, basically, with looking at the CS. He's up at eight or seven. CS already seven and two. About be eight after he gets this one. Oh, Miracle. Uh, uh, I didn't see how he died down there, but I guess seeing Blast Off is on cooldown here. He jumps in side lane. For those uh, future Blade. trades. Mikey does drop some ale very low here. Breaks the south as well. Fairy Fire is oh. still there. Orb flies through. Forces the Fairy Fire. Mikey goes in aggressively, and he's behind the tower now. He's going to miss out on the Screak Wave. Samail's going to TP hole, but Blast Off! Oh, no! No TP for Samail as he's going to respawn. Going to have to walk back to the lane. They ride momentum, and they're going to try and do the same thing. Samail is being protected by Matthew. Cheesy trying to jump away. Blast Off is still available. Kuro is on the low ground. Vortex thrown in as well. And the arrow snipe from Kuro, maybe? No, I'm just right clicking down. <laughs> yeah, just kind of go. Shield rune over on the puck. He dives into the storm. Oh, the coil will be used. The centaur is there using that war stomp already. Is the damage sufficient? Kuro's going to be here as well. One more hit. They've got some mail. And Matthew is forced away by Lodan. But Kuro, two points in Star Storm. Nice burst there from the Bushwhack, too. Mikey will help him through all the way. And here comes Cheesy back into action. Oh, the leap still connects with the bomb. And Kuro will go down for a double kill from Mikey. And now that you can see uh, at the same time as this is happening, they have overtaken in CS. 
and overtaken in kills and frames on my end. But uh, that's a quick call, eh? Kachal coming in with the arena. Not gonna drop it yet, though. Morphling will stand his ground. Oh, Spear comes Oh, the action keeps going. Oh, they're still Fox going at it. Oh, Sumail gets to turn around with a stampede from FBZ. Reality down, losing the carry. In this room to be taken from Mikey, and they will focus the enchant. Just another rain raindrop will pop, and the heals are flowing through, but it's just not enough. So a retaliation from Nigma. Yeah, good kill for them there. And the arena, oh, Miracle TP's away. Ooh. Very close That's call there. Close in here. They are scouted yeah. by a ward now, as they walk they want under vision. One power. Yeah. FBC is on the full runaway. Matthew. Actually, he's staying a bit. He should be running, but is he's, he baiting? All, he's still staying. Is, is he going to bait this through? Are they going to make it in time? Because Centaur's going to die, but can they retaliate? Bushwhack on two, and that's it. I don't it. think he's baiting. I think he just didn't respect it enough. Yeah. Tower is uh, well is uh, pretty healthy as well as the creep wave is between them. You can't really well, Matthew the did pull the creep wave away from the tier one tower, so tier one tower is not falling yet. So nail setting up on Mikey. Arrow flies in. That's a good kill. They got it. Nice setup there. So nail placing the remnant early into the vortex arrow combo. Ah, that was really good. And they're not looking uh, to glyph. If they it use yet. glyph, they don't have glyph for tier two, so I think they should not glyph. Uh, their free glyph reset is already gone. You see, cheesy. There's the jump for the vortex. Miracle is here, but uh, Kuro never sends in the arrow. They're sufficient with their damage. Let's hit for later. Sharpshooter connects onto a Mars that just teleported away. So that info is given. FBZ is able to move away from the area. Now they don't have the Mars, and the arena has no idea what's about to hit him. Nickman's gonna have to be awake with this one. He's coming towards the stacks to actually see him coming in. So GZ's ready. There's the mine. Instant silence. Blast off coming through. One TP coming in. Maybe even some more. Coil is popped. Kachal's trying to get there, but the bushwhack's gonna catch him first. The stampede is also there. FBZ, he bought enough time. And now the turnaround. GZ, he's gonna drop low. But Mikey with the damage with that arcane rune. And Kachal in between. GZ already low. But some nails on Amada. He's committed. He's fully committed to it. The arrow will connect onto the Mars, but he's already down. And maybe they can retaliate with a kill on Kachal. Kuro still has a leap charge, but he's gonna get zoned up with the spear. And Mikey trying to finish off the Hoodwink. Not quite enough damage to kill him off. Mars, he's gonna salve up, he's gonna go back in the action, oh, Buck is still going in, so Kuro will be surrounded from both angles and get themselves a 3 for one trade. Other heroes, of course this is still a, a pretty solid Morphling game when it comes through items, but uh, I, I agree with you, Mikey, I feel like he's getting away with this one. Yeah, he really is. And uh, yeah, speaking of Morphling, we haven't talked about him that much, he is getting pretty good farm. He's got the Yasha already going for the Mets, though, of course. Yeah. Smoke pot. Uh, have the Enchantress in front, so he's gonna take a while to get killed here. Arrow flies in as well, so they'll have the magic first to take down the Enchantress. But he's the one to soak up that smoke gank, so instead of the Mars dying, it's... Reality, he's got that Desolate already. This is gonna hurt a lot, but how deep is he gonna go? The Catapult actually shoots him, so... He is spotted, maybe he's not. They still got the jump on the hoodwink. Here comes Sumail, retaliating onto Mikey. Mikey gets the face shift off. FBZ almost misses the stun. They got the kill though. The blast off onto two of realities. He's afraid to commit that far into the high ground. So Sumail with a double kill. And they're just slowing down FBZ and Sumail as much as they can. Lodine even pops. The dust will connect onto the Marana. Slows her down. Haste for the Mars though. The reality still here. There's the leap. Another one, but he's gonna crash into the wall with that one. Okay, they pick up a uh, free Kuro with the arena. Yeah, question is, when does he leave bottom lane? I mean, he's enjoying farming down here for as long as he can, but at the same time, they haven't opened up the map at all. Nice dust timing there from Matthew, and actually surprising the clicks. The clicks will maybe go down here. Takes a bit of time, but finally done with it. And without the arena, well, I feel like Winter Bear, they just, uh, they bit a bit too much that they can actually chew. Nygma are repeatedly just punishing Winter Bear for his working on that shroud, which is, you know, one of my favorite items. This patch feels so strong. So uh, he's definitely going to get back into the game in a big way. And again, another smoke here to try and get Miracle. This has to work. He does have Mantle on cooldown. They're just going past them as well. They're like, is he on the left? Yes, he is. And there's the silence, oh, nice but he silence. already got his attribute shift on. 
And so this Morphling kill is going to take some time. And here are mass teleports. FBC with the blink stun. There's the Stampede coming in as well. Techies will drop, but look at Sumail going straight on top of Mikey. Now interrupting the Mars as well, but there's the leash. The damage might be sufficient. Yes, it is. Mikey for the kill to take down Sumail. Now Kuro's on the runaway. FBC spent everything. Still has a blink stun, but they don't have the tools to work with. Just the sharpshooter. And also Miracle, he wants out. Yeah, that looked like it was going to be nice, but a little bit of an overcommitment there by the Storm jumping really deep and landing next to the Clink's damage output. He's even going to try on FPZ now with a silence. Bushwhack sharpshooter, and Clink's goes down as Miracle's ready for the fight. So he'll take down one as they lose their centaur in the offlane, but does not matter if they get the carry kill. It's, it's pretty beautiful in a minimap when you see a, a full, you know, perfect grid by a techies. Yeah. But it also indicates a pretty slow game when you see it, so... <laughs> well, let's see who they find with this smoke, because Hoodwink is the one that's on their sights. Mikey will just jump on him right away. So not necessarily revealing the full smoke, but at least an idea that maybe there's vision, or maybe there was just a puck. Uh, jumping on me as a solo kill, and I was in the wrong position. But at the same time, there's already a BKB from Kachal catching FBZ. That's a good kill, because that Stampede will go unused. But Miracle wants to commit. Oh, look at that! The Kanda deletes reality, takes away Mikey. And Miracle for the double quick slash. They might have lost the support in an offlaner, but they get two cores and even more. Make it a triple. And hey, into the minefield we go, but he doesn't care. He doesn't care one bit. He could still keep on going. Three seconds for another waveform. But Jeezy and Kachal, they're already fought too Dyer's far away. Tower. But it's three kills for Miracle. It could yeah. be really nice to have a Lincoln's ready to protect if you ever end up being unable to face if dodge it as Puck. And um, they're going for more stuff as well. They're going for Lotus Orb on the techies right now. So trying to deal with that Orchid in a different yep. way. Oh, good vision here. Already placed by Nygma. They see everything. There's the Blink stun. And your Blinks is going to say good night. But he survives with the BKB pop just in time. And FBZ is in the middle of the arena. They've got the Puck low on HP. Puck will go down one for one. Jeezy with a beautiful three-man blast off. And reality, he's afraid to commit with the damage. So Jeezy, he's trying to run out. But it's not going to work out for him. And Kachal will just BKB teleport away after he blinked in aggressively. So that doesn't work for Winterbear. But Nigma, they were ready for it. Good ward placement, giving them the info that they need and get the target they want to jump on the most, which was the Clinks. And now onto the Enchantress as well, making another kill for uh, Nigma Galaxy. I was actually on the back of an arrow connecting onto the puck there that that fight turned really good. So Kuro got a, a random arrow that connected onto him and uh, that stun oh, set up for the Hoodwink ulti using the Mars abilities. Yeah, Almost on GZ, the dust will connect. He and the acorn shot follows him. Yeah, no way out of that one. I like how Matthew just keeps winding up the ulti even more after the click as well. He's like, yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna charge this up. You're, you're gonna die. He did push. Uh, suffering from, uh, you know, flickering lights hurting your soul. Mm. Mid, we see a smoke, uh, not a smoke, actually, just the Invis Clinks coming here, looking for something with the coil. Actually making something with the coil. They're going to take down Kuroki, but they didn't get the kills they were looking for, but maybe the Centaur is going to be the one to do it. Sharpshooter is loaded up at the back line, and he will connect onto the Clinks. Clinks gets deleted by Miracle Kachal. It's too late for this one. Oh, boy. Yeah, they're going on to the Enchantress as well to try and burst them down. And look at the damage from the Morphling W yeah. again. Still Shadow Boss. It's, it's, it's more, the, more the more mind games than the actual numbers on the board. Yeah. Yeah. Tormentor taken away, so they know where they are. Winter Bear fully smoked up. Every ability is available. Radiance Middle Tower. Makes also just freshly attack. uses the Death Pact. And now let's see what. Uh, what they can cause. Lodine will show himself in the lane with an egg click on the ground. They got the Morphling Hex stop, and that's the big kill. They've got it. Big streak, and it's for the Clinks as well. And the Storm Spirit almost dies too. Sumail barely gets out, bottle refilling himself as he jumps away. The early game was shut Radiant's down by the Storm a lot, so he's doing the right thing. Mm, meanwhile, look at the read here by Winterbears, just seeing that, okay, nobody's showing on the map. Let's catch all. In the, lane. the moment he shows himself in the lane, he's just deleted. Um, gonna, that's gonna be a buyback force for sure. No way he can hold this. 
He's got to use it. He's got to be just the rest. They're waiting for people to come back into the base. Mikey's hoping he can hold them by himself, but that's not quite going to work out. The silence is onto the Enchantress this time, and Mars is not buying back. Mikey still moving around with the reactive taser. Doesn't get a connection on it, and Nicholas very handy versus uh, all the burst Winter Bear has. Like, if Clint uses his full set to try and kill, say, a Centaur, who can now place aggressively, he can pop the cheese for some extra heal. And he has an item slot for it too, because he can just move away the wand. Meanwhile, Matthew does go down, and the Stampede uh, does come out a bit late, because he's already dead. Enigma now uh, uh, approaching through the bottom lane for a bit of a push out the lane at least. Maybe force Winter Bear all the way back into base. Coil is still on cooldown. Exactly what they want to do because this is basically pretty much a mega creeps push. Lodon is in between all of them. He's spotted. He's killed. Mikey is also here for the silence. You gotta be really careful about that positioning now. Jeezy, he's spotted as well. Lotus is himself to get rid of all the debuffs. Sumail is out of mana. Still has a cheese. The arena coming through, but a nice stun from FBC at the same time. And there goes Kachal. He's gonna die, and he might even need to buy back. The Enchantress has already bought back, but Mars only now returning back into the fray. The melee ranks is halfway. Mikey with the coil, connecting all to three. Two snaps. Sumail, he can't get out. He realizes that I'm just gonna take the bullet for my team to try and escape as he is down, and the bushwhack will keep him at bay, but Kashal actually dodges it with that four staff cast on him, and Matthew will drop, so they get two kills for their efforts, but two buybacks as well, Winter Bear. The so, fighting in your own side of the map could be very dangerous. Enchantress, spotted by Centaur, doesn't have detection, but Mirana is coming. There's the stun, there's a storm, Mel and there's the arrow. A combo they have used throughout this entire game. The Vortex Arrow combo. So Mail and Kuro. Five. There's the, t uh, the Tar Bomb multi-shot. Coming through nice. mid. This is, again, they need to react to this fast. Manta comes out. Spear connects onto FPC. He was trying to stun Kachal. Kachal needs some help. He pumps a refresher. Has another arena. Has to place it down before he dies. And FPC's inside of a miracle. He's on the edges of it. He's inside the wall, actually, right now. Can't really move anywhere. But they've done the job. It's Mega Creeps inside the base of Winter Bear. And no Mars for 100 seconds. Kills, and they finished off the Bloodthorn now on the Clinks. The, the he actually bought out, so there's no buyback on the clinks if he dies. Yeah. One Miracle trick pony. Pretending to be an illusion here, looking for anything. Girl's already dead, okay. You know, somebody has to get um, rid of the wards, he'll play the team game. <laughs> yeah, he got bursted pretty fast, they stepped on some mines and got uh, blinked by a puck. Reality is on the edge of vision here. They see the Morphling. If there was anything we mentioned about them in game number one, uh, I'm happy that this is turning out this way so we can get a really competitive best of three for the final spot as it's supposed Holding. to be. Good night, Enchantress. Miracle. He stood there as a ward on the cliff for 40. Then they could play a 5v4. Look for picks here. And you're constantly missing a hero on Winter Bear. Kachal could be the next one. Bonks at the same time as the Centaur jumps in. Yeah, pushes him back so he actually misses the boot stun because of it. Can be used up on the Morphling. Mikey will use the coil. Morphling will get stunned. Arena and the spear, double arena even, and the spears are available for Kachal, but can't quite keep up the just reality. He sees Kuroki, tries to snipe him, but not able to get the kill right away. FPC with a stun onto the Mars. Mars is silenced for a very long time and finally gets the arena off and has a refresher for a second, but he's gonna die. He won't get to do anything. Jeezy tries to blast off away, but this Morphling hits like an absolute, I wouldn't even say a truck, but like a juggernaut, and I'm not talking about the hero. Just storming down Mikey, looking for whatever he can here, but the, the gem nearby. The silence onto the puck, keeping him at bay. Miracle sieging the tier four tower to expose the ancient. One last building to go. Four versus four. Kuro might be dead. Mikey actually goes for a very short orb there. And he's in a face shift right in the middle of, en of the enemy lines here. Gets to poke Miracle a bit. But Miracle, he's on base. He wants Lodon. He wants the Enchantress. He'll take it. 
He'll take what is more yours. And now FBC with the blink stun backline onto reality. Ancient down to half HP. GZ with the initiation. Puck is also fighting for his life. They do save the Ancient for the time being. FBC is down. GZ will have to buy back. FBC coming with the buyback as well. Matthew is on the runaway. The coil is going to be connected onto the Morphling. And reality and Mikey both so cautious to jumping in. Marana, he's down to half. And Kuro could just die back on this one. But there we go. Reality deleted. Miracle for the triple. And reality will get another kill from Sumail. Ultra kill already. Ancient exposed. The, the rampage. Give him the rampage. That's what we want. That's what we want to see. Reality though, he will try to fend off this Morphling. But Morphling ends the game before the rampage goes one on the map away from Winterbear, but slowly but surely they hit the Morphling timings and that that's where the engine really started to kick in. So they buy uh, seconds. Can you primal damage. this game? Because the side lane a lot to push. It gives them really nice push comp. You needed to call for a pause in your team by one of your players and the of course you write lag or whatever, but you know like the most weirdest pause reason. <laughs> the weirdest pause oh yeah. We can take that after this uh, top kill attempt. They're gonna get the first blood from the techies. Great timing for a segue talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, but players but always, the they, they always write lag. Just for the viewers out there, it's, it's, it's a known secret, but some of you don't know. Uh, whatever the reason is, it's always lag or uh, DC or Kale <laughs> or FPS. Are or you saying they would lie? No. Nope. That's some serious accusation there, T-Panda. Nope. nope. Precious bone. Never said anything. Bottom, on, but uh, you'll take it at that point. It's the lane stage after all. Chal is having a hard time here on bottom lane now as well after losing his support at first. Oh, I say that. They no leaps. Ten sticks. Tries to deny. Oh, the small centaurs. Yeah, he's got it. He walk back in. The big centaur, however, is interrupting Miracle here a bit, but he is still dealing some nasty hits on Kachal. Two evades in a row. FBC goes down to reality. So I feel like DK is maybe even a, even in a more worse situation than the Brewmaster is. Has picked up the six minute Lotus rune on the Morphling, so he'll get his mono refill back up. Big story of this game really is how Dragonite is not having a very good game at all. Now Pango coming in though. It could turn with this rotation. Sumail is here. Ench, nowhere to run, just too many slows to deal with there. Precious bounty. In general, when you think about a patch where armor items are so easy to get, so cheap to oh, get no. in such multitude. Oh, again. And she's really taking the brunt of the hate here. FBZ will get this kill, so much needed network for him as well. It is. Yeah, it's, it's very nice. I mean, ever since you this. approved it, I've been playing it a couple of times. I like yeah. it. Uh, I've got like 30 games on it and already we see a nice return kill here for Kuroki getting GC down. Yeah. But help of Sumail, of course. Sumail oh. going top as well. Yeah. Poking up here, looking for whatever they can find. Is it going to be GZ? I feel like it is. GZ's been living in this mid lane, and now he steals a level three bomb. Gets to uh, gets to not throw it down. He's already deleted. That's the uh, the fusel reveal. He gets. To and Nigma have a small net worth lead being built up here as well, considering how well that lane did go for Sumail. GZ. He does actually get the swashbuckle arrow flying in though. Will barely miss, but the necro ult the oh it's not enough for a kill. There go your stacks. He was hoping to get it. Let the swashbuckle kill. Let us die. Push bottom. Mid. GZ. Swashbuckling away. Oh, the arrow almost connects again. Sumail with another. This time he's got it. Long range kill. And he's got the Sumail is back again with the smoke this time with the invis as well. They're Mage sneaking Slayer. in. Slayer of Enchantresses. And number three for Lodine. I think coming in for Dragonite as well, so they could look for more here potentially. But every single hero of Winter Bear is reacted to that. This is the timing. They're gonna try and go. They have Brewmaster Ulti, they have Gyrocopter here. They don't have Aghanims, but it doesn't matter. They yeah. wanna make something happen. Duels and Radiance are the items that they have. Mines are there. Okay. Radiance can tank them. Tower no. is under attack. And there's also a ward right on top of him, so Nygma's like ready. Yeah, they're in a try they're gonna get pinstered in a moment here. Brewmaster would love to get his splits off, but he's gonna get stun locked. As Sumail shows up as well. Jeez, he could be the second one to drop as well. Sumail's looking for the connection. And finally does with a swashbuckle and a very early necro ulti from Mikey. Does absolutely nothing to Kuro. And Miracle gets away. Reality is still gonna be fighting on the low ground. Lodine, the next one to drop. Make it three for Nigma. 
and they're gonna look for a fourth as well with the gyrocopter. Caught for the DK stun and burnt and so many dots on top of him, so many debuffs that reality just can't handle. Yeah, they pretty sick oh, Pango network you. that I've uh, I've seen in the last few weeks of Dota. Yeah, Kachal. and that's with him being active. There's oh, the stun the from FPZ instantly, arrow to follow it up, and the rolling thunder and the blast off stacking everything and making sure that they can get the kill on the brew, again preventing him from getting that ulti off. And by Nygma here. This is just going to be an attempt. I feel like they can actually do it because Roche is already down a halfway. They're half uh, way through the jungle on the side of Winter Bear. They might not make it in time. This is going to be super crucial. Kuro, he's in the right oh, place to pop the smokes as well. So they're going to lose the movement speed from those smokes if he stands in there. But this Roche has fallen. A quick turnaround, but the smokes have popped. And Necrofoss doesn't really have much of an option except to go straight in. Meanwhile, they've got the Brewmaster already stunned here. Reality is going to try and do as much as he can. They've lost Kuro, so five versus four. Techies is dropping as well. Necro ulti onto FPZ. FPZ low on HP. Miracle thrown into the air. They're going to take another kill. And Winterbear are fighting through it, surviving through it. Zemail to drop as well. And Winterbear, despite getting a complete late arrival to the Roche pit, are able to win that fight and get some life into this team because they've been on the receiving end this game. Time gets to live throughout a fight. He finished a Midas and he's almost got a shard ready. Yeah, it's the comeback Midas after the Radiance going back for it. And, uh, yeah, the shard is going to help as well to uh, try and be more impactful around down the Dark Troll because otherwise you lose your tower. Top lane, Miracle. Right for the here, miracle. Out, but that's going to get cancelled. Extra ulti cancels it and the Aegis is gone, but this is going to take a bit to try and kill him again. Here comes Jeezy with the stolen blast off. He misses the timing on it. A bit Just too lift. early. Lifts himself onto the Morphling. And there's no backup coming in, so this is a huge kill. Four seconds, two seconds wave for him. Not going to be in time. Amazing pick off there for them. Not only that, but he also did use TP before, so <laughs> at level three. Ah, he didn't want the two H fury. Did he didn't want? Yeah, the absolute, four absolute fury value. Meanwhile, Techies is thrown into the air, gets the blast off away, even though he got pushed back by the Void Remnant. But still, the Brew Master on top of him, the disarm might take a bit longer for him to kill him. And reality there for the kill. And actually, they stole the uh, the reactive Taser. Yeah, that's a good one with the shard. I think this reactive Radiant taser can do a great job. Keep oh, fortified. actually, there's an interaction that's really funny here. If he reactive tasers, then Pango could kill himself very fast. On him. But you might not see that. Chain stun. Hold up the DP on Jaro. Havis. Difference between life and death right now. And Chances is the one that they're going to focus in the end. So Jaro gets away. Yeah. Uh, and he gave. We see uh, Brewmaster still on Kuro here. He has leaps though. He's been slowed up. No more leaps charges. Yep, there's the... Uh, I think he's in trouble here. A heavy slow and a quick crit to the face by Kachal. Control. Tier 2s would have been falling. And yeah. we'd be waiting for Winter Bear. What's the next item? What's the next timing that they're going for? That Roche fight has really gained, changed this game. Oh, While the male and FPZ are going to be jumping onto Mikey. Matthew coming in as well with the blast off. The dual save there for the Necrofoss keeps him alive a bit longer. There's the Necro ult. He stack number two. Guaranteed. Miracle pumps his BKB to fight against Reality. Reality is losing this fight versus Miracle. Heavy hits flying in and has to move away completely behind the trees. Tries to juke around, but they have vision. They see where he is. Morphling might get stunned and they've lost three on the side of Winter Bear. And the moment you talk good things about them, they will lose three, maybe <laughs> even four, as Necrofoss is controlled. The Brew ult is about to run out. 17 seconds left. So he's going to use that charge to get himself out of there. But that Brewmaster looks like the only survivor from that fight as Nigma, they instantly take away their hopes and chances. Tower, deep position. Be, uh, the in trouble. Gonna try and swashbuckle his way out. Oh, he's dodging abilities. Got the strength oh, gain. Oh, he's morphing. Strength Stronger. gain. Stronger. 2.6k HP Rubik. So he's got that one secured for him. Yeah, that will be a watcher at least. Yeah. And they're <laughs> dancing around here. Yeah. Rapper, we have changed positions. Now we have Winter Bear in the Roche pit. And Nigma are the Nigma ones contesting. <laughs> Necrofoss, great jump, the perfect target to go for it. But the Yules comes out for the arrow. Matthew wanted to blast off elsewhere. And they get the turn, they get the turn with that. Miracle in the middle. Reality and Miracle both for low on HP. The dodge comes out as well. Miracle takes down the gyrocopter. 
and that will also mean the Rubik will fall. But Miracle, he's on the way out. He's trying to get away from Kachal and Mikey, who still has a couple abilities to throw into the mix. But Kachal is dead. Mikey is kited. And he's trying to jump onto Miracle, can't quite catch him into the DK stun, and he sees no way out except the TP, but Sumail also has an answer for that with the bash on the swashbuckle, while the Morphling still kited by Lodan, trying to get a solo kill on the Enchantress, and Mikey still, still has to fight them. Yeah, he's getting kited into the minefield again, so he brings his buddy. Can you hit these mines, please, for me, so we can continue <laughs> fighting this pointless fight? The good thing for Nygma as well is that they are capable of splitting multiple lanes at the same time. Winter Bear, not so much. But they have to protect oh, two lane pushes at the same time. While that tower is taking damage with double catapults, they are killing heroes at the same time. Submail pushing Winter Bear back. Kachal still has the primal split available. Matthew, he is very deep right now. Gets caught by the stolen blast off from GZ and into the Reaper's Scythe. Now FBC sees a moment to come in. Matthew coming in with the Vivek as well, but the tankies, they can instantly teleport to the outpost and return to the fight, making it a 5v4 plus the Aegis. Sumail, gonna get hit by the stun, the Pango dropping already very low reality, finally getting in closer, but they don't have the detection instantly to hit the Pango. Nobody brought in the dust of the sentries. They couldn't see him. Mikey thrown into the air with the Yules as well. Jeezy's low. Necro to fall. There's the Rubik that drops as well. Kachal goes back. And oh boy. Aye, aye, aye. Fence, the tier fours have already fallen. And Miracle, he's looking to end the game. Reality, he'll have to intervene. Big Kanda hit from that adaptive strike and forcing them back. Matthew jumping in. Jeezy gives it. He gives himself a chance to use the blast off. Jumps onto the Morphling. Morphling low on HP. Maybe get through the Aegis, but the Ancient is already down to 1500 HP. And they're just nuking through it. FPZ with the Dragon Form. They can't stop it. They can't stop the push. And Nygma Galaxy forced out the GG, destroying the Ancient and the spot directly to the Grand Finals with that.